What's up, everybody? Welcome back to PLD Projects. Welcome back to Review. I am your host, PLD, and with me as always, the one person who probably has more rants on makeup than anybody else I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Compliments! <laughs> hey, in this episode, it's actually absolutely deserved, so I can't wait to get into that with you. Okay, before. in my defense, though, I think this is the only thing i can think of where i have a rant on makeup fair enough fair i enough. have never criticized any horror movie for their effects and okay. you've watched some bad ones too so that's true so i'm saying <laughs> this is what drove me there i have a towel i'm throwing it <laughs> I brought very, well. very well i can't i can't deny you on that um I, uh, so one other thing I want to get off my chest before we get into this episode is uh, reading that book. I found out that one of the executive story consultants of V also had a very big, strong hand with Highlander the series. <gasps> I know it's one of your favorites. So it's weird how they connect. It's weird how they connect. I don't know how. I, 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 I love Highlander did. so much. Even today, I was just thinking about it. It's so 90s and dated. I wonder what it would look like today with like a really good writer and mm. uh, less limitations on um, episode orders. Right, right. Could have been great. <laughs> Could have been great. Instead, we uh, we didn't get that, unfortunately. And we kind of got shit to bed on the, on the movie franchise as well. But we are getting a movie again, a remake, we're going to say. <laughs> PLD, why do you have to bring up that disturbing... Horrible, you know, nonsense. John Wick. John Wick is good, so he is the person behind it is good. Doesn't mean it's going to be good, but at least I appreciate the person behind the scenes so far. So I'm gonna let it cook. I'm gonna let it cook. Let's see. I am not sold, but I'm. You gonna... know what? This week or maybe this week, I, we got that that trailer for The Crow. I'm still crying a little about it. Um, yeah. I'm just, uh, my faith in these things is down. It's depleted. It's non-existent. I understand. I do understand that. Although the crow is definitely not got the same pedigree, um, behind the scenes, at least as far as that goes. I, I kind of stopped myself and wonder, am I being too precious because I loved Brandon Lee so much and I love the original so much. Am I being too precious about it? And I find that I'm not, I just didn't think this looked very good. <laughs> I mean, actually, I should take that back. It looks good visually. It's kind of cool and everything else, but I don't think I need like the red, the, the white trash version of the crow. That's what it just kind of seemed like to me, which is a shame because I do actually do like Bill Skarsgård. I do think he could have been a good crow potentially in a different movie, a different time. See, but. I know I'm not being too precious with it because I mean, if you really, if you really put, press me, I'm putting City of Angels above the original. And I bet I'm the only person who's going to do that. I uh, might have to kick you off the screen. Like I, <laughs> I'm tempted to kick you off the screen for that. I don't. I actually actress. walked out of City of Angels like before the end was over. I, Perez. Um, I don't know the name of the actress, but like she's so defined, like my aesthetic. Like I wear eye red eyeliner because of this woman, because of this character. Really? Yeah. Like I, I was so obsessed with this. In high school. But I mean, I was that kid in high school. Every single day I wore a crow hoodie. I still have one of my t-shirts. I had a poster in my room. My uh, my mer maternal unit and my gram are both laid to rest in the same cemetery as Bruce and Brandon Lee. Oh, okay. um, like I, to say that I adore those those actors, their movies and the crow franchise is such an understatement. So I'm going to give it a chance. But uh, I just feel like it wasn't. It's odd. I feel like it wasn't made for people who are fans of the original. Agreed. Which is a uh, weird thing to do. Weird choice. It's a weird choice to make. I almost feel like they wanted to make, make it as far away from the original as possible. And maybe that might have been like a, a good idea on paper. Like, let's like not, we can't come close to what this is. This is. So let's try something completely different. Yeah, I think they just um, wanted to make it modern. Maybe. And what does alternative look like in modern times and that's what it looked like in the 90s oh that's for sure yeah and this is what it looks like now but those aren't the same thing no 
Yeah. Like there are still people who like that nineties aesthetic. Um, pretty, I mean, I grew up like a decade later. That's what I looked at. I'm sure there are kids today who like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like it didn't disappear just because hot topic changed. <laughs> That's um, fair. That's fair. You know what I mean? It's like, it's just, it's just an odd choice. I'm just the, the, from the get go, the soundtrack. I'm like, we, Oz, I don't know how to explain to this to people. Like Ozzy isn't the same as the crow. Like those are right. not the same. Oh. not equitable no no not at like all. not necessarily the same type of people are listening to these things now, i like both i mean the cure way more than ozzy but but then, but then you have ozzy with who is it post malone or something yeah post malone it's like, and that's just a weird choice yeah weird choice and then it's just it's the whole the crow is very obviously like a dystopian version of detroit city right. of angels is dystopian version of la AKA Absolutely. LA, AKA right. actual Detroit. <laughs> but you can tell that these were stages. Yeah. And everything on the set, every single thing that camera was taking was taken in specifically with purpose. Here, they were on location. It's a, a building that could be my building's lobby. It's yeah. the street downstairs. Like, it feels like the real world, which it shouldn't because- no. The aesthetic of the original film and some of the sequels, anyway, um, <laughs> was so purposeful and meaningful to create that tone and that mood and that look, which the look, I think, is the most important thing. And it's just so such a weird thing to do. Yeah, I don't know. I it agree. rubs me the wrong way. I know I agree with you on that. And when you mentioned the locations and everything, and it definitely had its own kind of feel. Like the, the city was very much a character in the movie comparatively. And this one does not feel like that at all. Um, I will say I don't wanna I don't want to trash City of Angels too much. I shouldn't trash City of Angels too much because quite frankly, I only saw it the one time in theaters and did not like it. But maybe I was being too precious about it not being Brandon Lee then as well. Even though I knew it wasn't going to be Brandon Lee, I kind of felt maybe, I don't know what it was. I was in high school. I do want to give it a rewatch. I will give it a rewatch at some point, give it a shot. Um, and I never even really watched the rest of the French. I've I seen, like I've definitely seen pieces. Salvation, and I've seen the one Eddie Furlong is in. So I've seen four of them. I've seen like bits and pieces of them all, but like never like sat down and watched them. I'm just saying you could probably stop at City of Angels. <laughs> That's probably what I've heard too. Oh, I really do wish I could see the what's called like the pay per view cut. Um, did you ever hear about this? No. There is a my my friend, our friend um, who he works in the he does like trailers and things like that. There's actually a cut of the movie that was shown like on pay per view back in the day that was like at least twenty to thirty minutes longer, and it's fleshed out a lot of the story. And it really, according to my friend, really kicked ass and really like maybe even much better film to him. Um, but <laughs> this is sad. The saddest story ever, one of the saddest stories I've ever heard. He had taped it off the pay-per-view. So he had this copy in his hand and he bought the Crow City of Angels uh, uh, on DVD. And on the DVD, it said something about a director's cut or something to that effect. And he assumed that was it. So he ended up using the tape and taped over it. It was like an episode of Monday Nitro wrestling, like WCW Monday Nitro. I mean, worth it. <laughs> right, right. That he found out there's like, oh, Bill. not the same cut. Uh, so there is a cut out there. I'm sure some people have it or have seen or whatever. But so I'd like to get that, but I don't know. It's not available anywhere. So unfortunately, no. I'll have to stick with the original, I'm assuming. But we'll find out. I will watch the first one again and we'll, we'll watch the second one again. I've debated talking to PJ about doing a, a season of it on Two Media for White News on a film to build up to the crow. But I don't know if I'm excited enough to do so. So <laughs> we'll have to find out. But that's the crow. We are 10 minutes in. We haven't talked about V yet. So let's get back to... Let's get I back mean, to I was falling. <laughs> we opened uh, with the worst open to a show I've ever seen. <laughs> this is our the worst opening. Okay. I v. honestly can't think of a worse opening. Okay. Are you still talking? Are you still are you still venting about the actual opening sequence? Yes. Okay. Okay. Fair. Okay. This as is long as I have to watch story. it. It's makeup and the opening. <laughs> well, don't worry. You only have to watch it one more time. That's the only the one more time you have to watch it. Unless you want to watch it before I read the script to you for a chapter. No, know. I think I'm good. I can I can <laughs> save a little time in my life. Uh, you know, I don't need to waste that 20 minutes. <laughs> 20 minutes. I like how every week it gets longer and longer. 
Poor it's like you. a McCarthy situation. And I have here a list. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. 84 um, minutes. <laughs> All right, well, this episode, The Secret Underground, um, it's funny because I remember liking this a lot more when I watched it the f like when I was a kid. Um, and I can see why, after watching it, I can see why I liked it as a kid. But man, like every time I watch it, it does get worse and worse. I'm judging child you. <laughs> I think part of me liked seeing Donovan and Julie back together in action again. I think part of me liked the intrigue, part of me liked the stuff with philip i got to see philip really working in the fifth column um but yeah the rest i really can't justify i mean honestly this felt i thought like donovan and we'll we'll introduce him in a few moments dr matlin had way more chemistry yeah than than maitland and julie oh yeah, yeah. maitland and julie had zero chemistry um maitland just did not look right for her and i don't mean look right but they just don't look right together they just feel off it almost feels like he's too old for her like they're supposed to be this like college like, like medical school couple he, well i'm assuming he looks older than he is he looks like he could have been in some westerns oh maybe. but i looked it up and he wasn't but he has like that face yeah that no yes sense. that's like Absolutely. john wayne was probably like oh no no, no. who was he who, who was in the original blob steve mcqueen Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve McQueen. Where he's like, I think he was younger than me when he made that movie, but he looks like my father's age. <laughs> yeah, he definitely does have the weathered look, as they would call it there. So I guess that would make sense. He's out of the tanning booth, guys. It's not healthy. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, but we will get there. We'll go through that with, uh, Mr. with Dr. Wheeland, I should say. Um, let's go through the bit. I will say I did like the very first sequence. I, I, sh I should like it because it reminds me of something better. But it kind of reminded me a little bit of the original miniseries. Like when they brought, like they're bringing the resistance people on board. They're like, this is your final destination. It almost like call back to the visitors being more, uh, what's the word? It's more of a threat than they have become recently. Um, even though these are no-name people. Yeah, they've lost all the, the issue with having the show be serialized like this and not telling like a longer story. Although the TV show tells a longer story and I regret it. <laughs> I regret it so much. But um is that you know, it takes all of the bite. Right. It even takes the bark. Yeah. They're not intimidating just, anymore. They almost use the visitors too much. They use the visitors too much. It's like using a monster in a in a horror movie too much. But also the visitors never seem to win at any right. point. You know, it Star Wars might be a better example. You know, in the middle one, Empire, right? right? Right. The good guys bet. lose. Yeah. The bad guys All win. hope is lost. You need that. You need to have. And the whole film, they're, the good guys are on their tail or on their uh, on the heels, they should say. They're running away. They're barely surviving. That is what's missing. Uh, the only time I can think of that it felt even a little like that in the past, I would say in like the second half of the, of the series, is maybe that first episode, uh, The Rescue, when uh julie was with your favorite people julie was with the uh the doctor ah. and that kid. but when, when they but that's when james and everybody attacked the club creole and everybody had to split and run that felt at least like they were intimidating again they got to the point where like they were doing something they flushed the they flushed the resistance out they spread them out yeah donovan was able to save the day and help uh and save julie from being captured but at the same time the visitor made a move at least so it felt that way this time it's like mcguffin Donovan and company solve it. They save the day and the visitors lose. That's just like they're at rinse and repeat, pretty much. Um, and that's not just found footage. That's just the familiar footage either. That's just in regular regular episodes. Um, but speaking of familiar footage, it almost feels like here we are. We have another visitor fifth columnist and appearing to be his wife. <laughs> I guess the fifth column is a family thing. Their husband and wives work together all the time, I guess. Or I think they're husband and wife anyway. Um, Jonathan, as he is, uh, Jonathan and Selma. Uh, of course, Selma being like, oh, it's too dangerous. It's too dangerous. But Jonathan has to go try to get this list that we know of. We hear for the first time. Okay, A he's list. got a floppy disk. He... It's so bad. It's so bad. So bad. The MacGuffin is so bad in this episode. That's what they have. The leader of the Fikamas on is a floppy disk. Uh, mm -hmm. 
Would it be funny yeah. if the leader was like in like a robot, kind of like a I'm trying like in uh like in Loki. In oh, Loki yeah. That is yeah. all the smoke and mirrors. Right, right. Well, like you in know a what? kind of situation. Be it fun. Only, I mean, maybe we'll get we'll there. never get there. So we'll get like there. why not? Right. I'll spin this story. I'll make it more interesting. Dang it. You could make season two. Uh, which part of the reason why I can't wait to, to talk about that episode with you, the 20th, the unfinished episode, is because I get to discuss some of the theories that I've heard and some of the things, some quotes that I heard also about the direction of season two, had there been a season two. Um, mostly bad, but some interesting. Some interesting. You know, one thing you would have liked. There's one thing that you would have liked. I'll tell you that much. That's my, that's my little teaser well, ultimately teaser. i think it's good it didn't get a season two because we clearly didn't know what to do with season one there was no plan I, I i agree i just wish for little pld's sake that there had been a final episode that at least tied it up without having any loose ends like without the cliffhanger we got why did they do loose ends they could not have actually believed they were gonna get to continue this well, I'm looking at it. It looks like, I mean, he did have the other episode that was unproduced. I think that was supposed to be the season finale. And that one does end in a, I can't say it ends in a very final way, but it was a better open-ended way. Towel? Just... <laughs> Throwing it in. <laughs> Fair enough. We'll discuss that when we get there. Um, but it was a better open. Let's just say it was a better open-ended way. It would have been a more satisfying open ended way than the way we we got. And little PLD was like, "What the hell? Where is this going?" But we'll, we'll get we'll get there. I'm I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get back to Jonathan, who's taking the floppy disk. Um, actually, one of the better parts of the episode is when he gets shot and like bleeds all over the place with green. He bleeds his green blood, and he's trying to find a way to hide this disk. <laughs> it almost gets a little comical though, because he's kind of like, "Oh." <clears throat> it was giving uh, Pee Wee Herman's death in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, 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 five minutes later, uh, uh. or in Karate Girl, that death scene ever. These are very good. This is very good reminders. Yes, if you like those scenes, you might like this scene. Um, he does make his way to the big ceremonial room, which seems to be the one lot on the set that they always use for special occasions. Um, yeah, I got a question. So he hides this floppy disk in what he will call a volcano. Right. I feel like it was really obvious when he said it's in the volcano. If what? if someone said that to me and I went into that room, I would immediately know, oh, that's where he hid oh. it. It would be very, it's like so obvious, it but whatever. Is. But there's this big um, crystal thing on what is like a, a rock that kind of looks like a volcano. Have we seen that pink crystal thing before? Are they recycling the same pink crystal thing? You know, I'd have to go back and I really, w I should know. I feel like we saw it during the wedding of Charles and Diana. I feel like that, but I could be wrong. I, I feel like we've seen this at least once before. I do too. I do too. I wouldn't be surprised. Um because they're trying to save budget. So maybe they had that for that. Like, oh, we can use this. And I mean, honestly, it's kind of pretty. If I was working on this, I'd have taken it home, put it in mm -hmm. the living room. <laughs> Be a little big for a living room, maybe. But... I mean, some of these houses are pretty big in LA. That's true. So you're, you're not put wrong. it in the yard. <laughs> you're not wrong. Piece. That is a statement. I mean, it's definitely uh, right out front, right out front. Is that a, really, Backyard. You... Backyard. This is not for the. Man, all these little delinquent youths running around. I don't want them messing up my volcano. That volcano. <laughs> the, right. Next thing you know, Joe is out here. He's like hates his job. He needs to jump into a volcano because he's got a brain cloud. That's not the place to do it, guy. Go to Hawaii. Right. That's right. <laughs> I like a Joe versus volcano record. I'll take a Joe versus the volcano reference anytime. Um, I love that movie. I think it's I one of the best movies. I love that movie as well. I think it's a phenomenal movie. I think uh, very underrated. Have a brain cloud. No one believes me. It's <laughs> fine. <laughs> okay, so he gets uh, gets into the volcano, and then he stumbles on for another ten minutes. It seems like uh, we're fighting Philip. Philip in the hallway, or Philip finds him kind of um, after Philip has to berate Maitland. Philip, uh, it always you know, Philip is doing a very good job, at least to me, 
of making it seem like he's a he's still on the visitor's side there because he feels like he's telling Maitland a lot. Maitland's supposed to be on his side. Wait, does hey, Maitland hey. even know that Phillips on his side? I don't even know. What's on going. the name of Doctor Maitland. Doctor, you worked Maitland, hard yeah. for that doctorate's degree, I yes. assume. Uh, and I also think it's important that he doesn't want to turn people into zombies. Okay, all right, stick with me here. I'm not saying that the visitors created the Umbrella Corporation, but if the leader is, in fact, a robot, like I think, I think the leader is the little girl who's like, you're all going to die down there. Wow. Who has that... a name, and I can't think of what it is. Red Queen? She, the leader is the Red Queen. I got this. Okay. Uh, they okay. created the T-Virus. Not that I have this all written out of my notes in caps. Because I was very excited about it. <laughs> I did not know we had a Resident Evil uh, crossover going on. Okay. All right. I get it. Um, I'll also say it's the 24th? 24th? Yeah, 24th anniversary of the first film. I know this because I went to see it on the midnight premiere on my 10th birthday. And 10 years old. Well, you know, some people grow up without any parental supervision, so <laughs> and you get to do fun stuff. For it. Sometimes they're better for it. Fair enough. Um, you know what? Actually, going back to Dr. Mainland as well, what I didn't understand and I don't understand it still to this day is why the hell do they have human scientists working with them? Like, why are they relying on human scientists? Because the humans made... The zombies, PLD, clearly, uh, okay. the visitors didn't originate <laughs> that technology. The T-virus is definitely a uh, human right. invention. Come on now. <laughs> Sorry, you're you're right. I, I should have known. Oh, you I should have known. Uh, <laughs> yeah, nothing makes sense in this episode. Let's not... I mean, we're going to try, but we shouldn't. It's one of those things, things that didn't bother me as a kid because I didn't think about it. Now I'm looking. Well, like, there's something that's going to bother me later. Oh, I know. I have a bunch of. I think I might have written WTF the most in, in my notes for this one that I, I have. I have a lot ones. of caps. <laughs> caps, fair enough. Uh, it looks like I have the caps lock on. No, no, don't worry. I'm just losing my mind. Just very How? intense. <laughs> Throwing it in. in. Throwing it in. Okay. Uh, do we have our caption of the show at this point? Uh, our teeth of the show. Um, all right, so Jonathan dies with, before he does tell Philip about the volcano, and Philip cannot figure that out or has no idea what he's talking about. I did love he like runs away because he hears Diana's voice. No, he runs to the door the that's right next to where Philip is. Oh, no, I'm sorry, not Philip, where Jonathan has just passed and then walks back out as if he knew nothing of what was happening. Right. That's you're what not, I loved. You're the, you're not inconspicuous, bro. You like you're like you're like real obvious about it. I think as we find out more and more, he's getting more and more it's, obvious about it, and doesn't give a fuck. And yeah, I'm okay with it. I'm okay increasingly with it. obvious about it, and like he does when when he learns like Diana has accused him of of I don't know being for the call. made accusations against him. Uh he just keeps talking about it to everyone, even people who are like, no, I don't care about this. It doesn't matter. Let's move on. But he like, continues to talk about it. And there's one scene I felt like it wasn't like shown like repeat footage, but it seemed like the exact same dialogue shot twice. It might have been. It might have been. Actually, there is. Yes, there is scenes that are very similarly uh, spoken. I mean, there's just and he just keeps talking about it the whole time. It's like, dude, no one cares. Like, right. you're OK. Like, you're good. Like, right. no one likes Diana. You're clearly fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Right, um, what are you doing? <laughs> so, Philip goes down to Donovan and Julie and tells them about the list and about Maitland, of course. So, we get our first flashback of Dr. Maitland and Julie. Oh, my oh, God. God, this was vomit-inducing. I'm not going to lie. Oh, it's terrible. It is so bad. I'm sorry, Faye Grant, that you had to do this. Uh, I feel like there's nothing rewarding about this. Not only that, but like this is not the only one. This is the only flashback I'm able to give. It. Like there's, there's just multiple. multiple flashbacks, and it's like, and they're uh, not well done. No, they're like awful. in this particular one, the guys are talking, and she's in the, a memory, right, with the voiceover of the guys who are in present time talking. It's like, why are we getting a silent flashback? <laughs> what is the point of this? But then we do actually get to hear them talk. Right, later on. But then it's like him reading a note 
that she wrote him with her voiceover. I'm going to stop. No, I regret everything that's happening. I regret the pressing play. The execution today. is dreadful. Dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. I fully agree. So what's funny about this to me at the end is what is the best decision they can make when they have this list to find? Donovan and Julie are going to go up on the mothership and search for the list. Dumb. The number one and two leaders of the resistance, Dumb. most well known, most wanted outside of Elizabeth, who, by the way, does not appear in this episode. You got Elizabeth less episodes today. Uh, one Thank good thing you. about the episode. One good thing. <clears throat> no do sex machina, no Jedi powers. But my God! Oh, there's some egg machina in this episode. There, but not the it's not the Jedi powered one, so it might be worse. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> um, yeah. So it, it's definitely well past the trope that Donovan and Julie are going to go on board, and then they say Philip is going to have Oswald meet them, and uh, I. I have more talk about with Donovan and Julie, but we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Yes, the towel is going down. <laughs> exactly. Um, next up is probably the best part of the episode. It is Oswald being prepare preparing for the Feast of Ramallah. <laughs> okay, I'm just confused about what he does. Like, Oswald does all the things. He decorates the men's. He decorates the bodies. He decorates <laughs> for the feast. Okay, at first I thought they said Ramadan. So I was like, oh, they're Muslim? <laughs> then I thought, and then I was like, I wonder if any of the visitors are Druish. Oh, man. And then I realized they said Ramallah. I'm like, oh, never mind. Yeah. Uh, Not Ramallah. as interesting. Not as fun. I am quite sure that was probably a case of let's find a holiday and we'll just change a letter and we're good. So then I started calling it Ramallah, my ding dong. <laughs> I, I might have said that once or twice myself as a kid. Hey. Uh, hey. Um, but the Oswald. Great. Oswald is a great character. He's a fun character. He's, he, he fits this version of V very well. He would not have fit in the many, many series very well, but with this this campy version of the series, he does do a good job. Uh, makes me excited. Uh, makes me happy, I should say. Um, all right, after that, we jump back down and we see the one of the worst renditions of, of, of surprise we've ever seen when Kyle and Willie get surprised by Donovan and Julie in visitor uniform because... They have never done that before. You've never seen Donovan and Julie in visit uniforms before going to And no one will ever think that they weren't visitors. Right. Right. Because uh, as Willie says, it looks Willie like Willie has brain damage. <laughs> no one will guess that you were imitation lizard. <laughs> uh oh, poor Kyle and Willie, by the way, in this episode. Like they I mean, actually I shouldn't even say poor. They got paid to basically stand there for two seconds I, and just I, J Jeff Yeager looks like he's aged five years in the runtime of this show. I feel so bad for this poor kid. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's Robert England, who just, he's always trying. He always gives his best. But there's just not a lot to give in this one. There's just not a lot to give, unfortunately. And, of course, I, we always have the line, the Donovan gets the line he usually gives, you know, and he should go wrong. You guys are the resistance now. Same shit he's given Kyle like three times. Please over now. It's uh, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm just tired. Uh -huh. Towel in. Towel in. Uh um go back on the another ship. We have Os some more Oswald. Oswald with Diana. And uh the tantalizing your sacrificial lamb has been procured. Oh my god, is this any kind is this some kind of like intrigue that's actually working for a couple seconds there in this no 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 however oswald the the actor's line delivery is Top spectacular notch. no notes I, I don't mean this in a facetious way at all like very seriously no. absolutely love what he's doing no i do too because he's taking something that's not a good script and he's actually making it at least interesting to hear that's i feel like he's the only person who's actually acting in this show and he just looks so over it too. Perfect. He does. <laughs> he does. He's tired. He's tired too. He if he had a towel, he might be throwing it in. He might be throwing it in. <laughs> um so Donovan and Julie get aboard. 
and they're supposed to she's gonna take them to the I think there's a Star Wars reference taking them to the X Wing, uh, where the director of human studies is. That's Maitland is the director of human studies. Okay, fine. Field, field e. Hang on, I have to stop you. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, we're all caps. Is this a fucking joke? He doesn't recognize them. He doesn't know who they are. Yeah, I just, just showed up two episodes ago, three episodes ago. He has no idea who they are. He's more dealing with the ceremonial stuff. He doesn't look at the most wanted list. That's like, actually to me, Oswald. Honestly, honestly speaking, Oswald not recognizing was probably the most believable thing about the episode. I wrote, "I'm flipping a fucking table." Is this a goddamn joke? <laughs> Everyone else, I agree with you. Oswald's the only one that I, I he's actually kind of clueless in some ways. I kind of feel like he is actually believable that he might not he might not get it. Um <laughs> but everybody else definitely will. Unfortunately, we get another fucking flashback as uh, Donovan and Maitland and Julie meet each other again. And it's like every time the flashback starts, I'm just like, okay, you gotta fast forward. If I wasn't reviewing wrote, the show, like I would turn it off by now, probably. But um sad. I wrote, oh no, another flashback. Another flashback. And of course, we knew it was gonna happen. You're gonna get the Donovan and Maitland macho alpha male, let's fight over the girl of the 80s thing. Well, I mean, they're fighting over the woman because in actuality they really wanted, you know, kids. <laughs> is that what it is? Is that what it is? They got a lot more chemistry, is all I'm saying. It's a real Freddy's Revenge situation. Gotcha. (laughs) You know what? I'll give it because that actually makes more sense. That I will agree that Donna the Maitland have more chemistry than Julia Maitland for sure. Um, But all right, we'll get we'll get to more about that as we go on. There's more go more to go on about that. Well, because you know what's up next. Yes, I do. Tell me about it. Go ahead. Hit me. Okay. Up. Nigel. I know. You're excited. I'm excited. You're okay. Excited. Lydia's brother shows up. I really like that she's very excited. She clearly has a very close relationship with her brother. Mm-hmm. She's happy to see him. She's introducing him around. And then she realizes, oh, wait, hold up. When were you born? He's, it turns out the youngest guy on the ship and the youngest officer on the ship is the one who is sacrificed. And apparently they're very weird midsummer-esque cult to Ramalan or whatever it's called. <laughs> so Diana had purposely had Oswald bring Nigel here. Now, Nigel, importantly... And to is, give him a commission, actually, to make him an officer as well. She made him an Oh, officer. yes. Not sure how Diana has that power, but she does, I guess. Hey, man. <laughs> oh, no. She nah, nah. runs a mothership in LA. She's got all <laughs> kinds of connections. That's true. As you do. Anyway, Nigel... <laughs> is an actor who has appeared in some little gyms, such as an episode of 21 Jump Street, Surprise. an episode of the 18th, Shocker. April Fool's Day, yes. Leprechaun, yeah. and most importantly, this S- man played the stripper in summer school. <laughs> oh, I love summer school. I, I, I should say, I have not seen summer school Probably since the 90s. I loved it when I saw it. I saw it a bunch of time in the 90s, but I haven't watched it in a while. I think Summer School is such an important film for horror movie lovers. It's it's quintessential. It's it's necessary viewing. There is a scene that might be one of the most grotesque horror, like horror-esque scenes outside of a horror movie, effects done by Rick Baker himself. And we have, I can't remember the name of the actor. He's, like, really famous for being in um, Ski School, obviously Summer School. Um, he's in Rockula. Oh, man, I love that movie. And he he plays a character by the name of Chainsaw. So Chainsaw right. and Dave, they're friends. They love horror movies. They talk about him ad nauseum, like myself. Very relatable. But I think this is the only non-horror movie I can think of that had horror movie fans in it. Right, right, yeah. You really don't see horde nerds outside of the horror genre, which I think is a damn shame because we exist everywhere. <laughs> there are I think the most horror fans are probably the most loyal fans to the genre than any other any other genre, I think. To be really honest with you. Yeah, if you can get into a cult classic horror movie, it doesn't have to be good. People just gotta like it. You can yeah. go to cons forever. You're good. More 
that's true. Uh, Dean Cameron is, is the guy I think. Yeah, yes, Dean, Dean Cameron. Cameron. Um, yeah, that's true. Also, shout uh, out to Rockula, great little horror musical. <laughs> yes, indeed. I, I have, I have seen that one. Um, <laughs> can't go wrong there. Um, all right, but yes, Nigel played by Ken Oland, who is in all of those episodes or pretty mentioned projects we just talked about. Um, I, I, I like him. I like him as an actor. I like his character. I like the relationship. This is actually definitely for me the strongest part of the episode. Um, like I did say, the intrigue of Diana bring him on board. Actually, it's a low bar. It is a low bar. I'll give you that as a low bar. And it's bar. definitely the 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 max. I is. didn't have a problem with it though. That's a good thing at this point. <laughs> I had no like I didn't want to poke anything. Yeah, no it. notes. So no Perfectly notes exactly. Good. <clears throat> and I do. It's funny. Like I will say that. Nigel was a potential. This is kind of a joke. I was talking about uh, uh, what's going to go on in season two. I did hear a potential that Nigel might have come back um, to have more episodes in season two. Oh, wow. Interesting. Um, I really wanted to get to know his character. <laughs> uh, he definitely was going to be in the comic book before the comic book got canceled as well. But people this like is so bad that comic got canceled. You know what? When you're. You, Sometimes, no matter how bad the show is, if you're the best in it, you might get a little, might get a second look. You might get a second look. He did good. That's he he did good. Tragic. <laughs> oh man. He did good though. Let's just say that. Um, and actually, this is probably Lydia's best acting in the entire series as well. I would think. I don't know if anything else has been. She's been that good in, to be honest with you. So, and again, low bar. Yes. Tragic. <laughs> Uh, we jump back up to Dr. Maitland, who was walking with Julie, trying to find out what's going on. Um, wow. Uh, macho friend Donovan, Julie, uh, he asked about, uh, Maitland asked about Donovan and her. And Julie says that they are just friends. I wrote, since fucking when? <laughs> no time for anything but war. We had so much working up towards their romance mm -hmm. and then apparently they broke up off screen at uh, some point that is <laughs> the worst thing they could have done like i i if you want to split them up that's fine but you can't like drop those hints. they they were definitively together in liberation day in the first episode they were kissing they were gonna go out for steaks they were doing all the stuff and the whole time they were doing stuff together, and all of a sudden they are just not together anymore. And they're never even and they don't on show screen us. together, really, right. until this episode. They haven't been on screen together for a long time. I'm wondering if there was like something behind the scenes, or right. I mean, you know what? I apologize to the writers. They must have accidentally forgotten to put that in their character bible that they totally <laughs> said they had. They mm -hmm. did. They had it. They had a writer's guide. I'm telling you. It's, it existed. <laughs> I'm going to read some passages from it later on. Um, <laughs> but uh -huh. no, you're wrong. You're absolutely right. I don't know. I mean, I know that Faye Grant, from everything I've heard, from the rumors I've heard, that Faye Grant was pretty much checked out at this point. Um, that's why you didn't see her a couple episodes. Uh, so I don't know if that had anything to do with it, whether she just didn't want to do anything. I mean, I don't think her and Mark Singer had an issues together, so I don't think that was anything. I just think they, I honestly think, I honestly think, and this is horrible, horrible writing. I, surpr uh, not surprisingly, I honestly think they brought this so. Dr. Maitland episode in and said, well, we need to have Donovan and her part. Yeah. <laughs> so, and okay, also, and here's my big thing. When mm. we first are introduced to Julie in the yep. very first episode yep. of V, the miniseries. Mm -hmm. She's with a man that she's clearly yeah. been with for quite some time. Denny. She's also yeah. still getting her doctorate's degree, so she's still in school. In this effing episode, we see her as a student in these terrible flashbacks mm -hmm. with this man, Dr. Maitland, and she writes a letter to him saying that they can't be together because she wants to put her career first for, I don't know, five minutes before she went and hopped in bed with that other guy who she said, fuck it, I guess I can be with this guy, but I can't be with that guy because of my career. What the actual hell? Well, I will say, to be fair, <sighs> that has happened in real life where if people have broken up and they said they want to do something else and all of a sudden they turn around and meet somebody else and it all goes out the window. 
for whatever Here's reason. the thing, though, about TV. From a writing stance, it's true. this don't make no damn sense. I agree. Fully agree. And I don't think they have any recollection of Denny. And I think this is a very bad retcon attempt. And I think this would have been so much better if this would have just been someone we saw her with at school with. Like in that first episode, she had plenty of lab buddies. Yeah. She yeah. just been a lab buddy. I agree. I agree. That's the way it's Or a done. professor. He looks like he could be her professor. Yeah, that could have been and that was that would have very well fit the 80s thing as well. He could have completely been her professor. Um, that would have made a lot more sense, and I would like that a lot better. Correct. Instead, no, we have to retcon Donovan and Julie. Brother? <laughs> well, that that would be a totally different kind of play on it. I would have been would. fine at this point. Let's have all <laughs> kinds of you know evil twins showing up, Martin. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Maitland, uh, it's fine. So, this is just fine. <laughs> well, as they're hashing it out, Maitland shows Julie his human experiments, and I gotta tell you, it just looks like they're tripping for me. Like, doesn't look like anything really bad. Like, they're talking about viruses. Yeah, one guy's stuff. blowing bubbles. <laughs> blowing bubbles. One guy's like playing with a ball, playing, with, they're throwing a ball back and forth. One guy's just kind of like jamming. It doesn't look like anything bad. It looks like they had, <laughs> they had a little. They had a few drugs or listen to music or listen to like that doesn't doesn't look like that's that bad of a deal. And they but they act like it's like, oh my god, look at this awful situation that's happening with these people up here. Right. So my my note is okay, so Matlin has altered a virus so it only is effective for 12 hours. Right. But if I'm being honest, I'm not really sure what's happening here at all. I totally lost the plot. But <laughs> ellipses, okay. That's what they chose to do. They they could have made it so like they're really sick or something. That would have been something. But like so the virus just makes them get the munchies and want to sway or not. There's no what I. I mean, if there's a virus that gives you the munchies, I think I've had it my entire <laughs> life. That's fair. That's fair. That's, uh, me too. Me too. Yeah, I say that while I'm wearing like a tie dye sweater and like <laughs> yellow glasses. Um, I should not talk about that. <laughs> Safe space. I'm Safe literally space. wearing a Scooby Doo hoodie. <laughs> I shouldn't talk about the munchies. Scooby uh, snacks. Scooby snacks. Um. <laughs> they used to make uh, like a snack and it was called Scooby snacks. And I bought them. They were like one of my favorites when I was a kid. They were fruit oh, snacks. Okay. Oh, they're out there. Fruit snacks. That seems weird. That seems like they wouldn't be fruit snacks. I think they made dog ones, too. Well, My that dog makes sense. Them. That's fair. Uh, all right. So we jump up to Philip's quarters where Lydia comes to Philip to try to seek advice on how to stop Diana from sacrificing Nigel. Um, Philip seems like out of it this entire time. Um was this the one where Philip had the champagne glass that he's using a straw to drink out of? Or does no, it, because that, they use the, the exact same meeting happens, and I think that's the second one where this, the line the, the dialogue is almost exactly the same. Right. That's the second one. That's the one he has. That's what he's really out of it. So he's this drinking one. high C out of a champagne glass with a straw, <laughs> and it bothered me. It bothered me a lot. <laughs> Um, this is where we decide that Philip has said that he will stop, he can stop the sacrifice only by a vote of the three line officers. Now, that surprises me because I didn't think we had any kind of hierarchy left in the V, but I guess they are the three line officers Philip, Lydia, and Diana, of course. Um, so well, Lydia, we know Philip is the leader of the ship, right? Absolutely, no, Lydia is supposed to be her second, so it makes sense that Diana is the third. Um, and I mean, Lydia, you can just put your brother on a ship and send him away. Yeah, as commander, they could do that. Her or Philip. But we also know that Lydia is higher ranking than Diane. It's just okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like they both outrank her. They could give her. They could transfer her him anywhere they wanted to. They could say, "Nope, gonna transfer you back," or Philip could do it, or anything of the like. But they don't because you know that would be too logical. Um, <laughs> Oh, isn't uh, it getting worse if you want to talk about logic? It gets worse and worse as we go along. Uh, we jump to Diana, who is brainwashing Thelma, Jonathan's woman, um, who, by the way, I think this might have been the first time I realized that they're the same character. 
that this this was Jonathan's woman in the first. That was the I first didn't realize game. that he just said it. <laughs> I didn't like for a long time, so I realized that's what it is. And she because Jonathan, it makes sense at least that Jonathan and her were together. John's the fifth columnist. Diana would take. And her on. this is like our what our fourth thing that is basically the conversion process, but they've called it something else. Right. Right. Uh, We've right. had the conversion process. We've had this like truth serum at one point. Mm -hmm. um, we had whatever they were doing to uh, the computer guy last Henry's episode. Henry's dad. Yep. The, the yeah. brain scan thing they were doing with him. They, ha they had the new conversion process. They have this. This is five things. You could have just done the conversion process every in, time. In 19 episodes, we had like five different things. Towel thrown. <laughs> Towel thrown. Uh, so Lydia goes to Diana. Basically, Diana says she'll do the vote. She'll change it. She'll be fine with it. Uh, maybe Lydia should sacrifice herself instead of Nigel. Yeah, and so what I was hearing is, oh my God, it's the Hunger Games. Yeah. I volunteer as tribute. <laughs> but Lydia does I not volunteer as tribute. Like, nope, that's a little step too far. I'm not going to do that. Like, I, I love him, but, you know, me I first. Yeah, I'm not going to. Uh, yeah, no volunteering for that. For, I'm for in Lydia my villain before. phase, or I'm sorry, my <laughs> villain era. Like, <laughs> one step at a time, guys. Uh, and then, so somehow at some point, Julie has gotten away from Maitland and is on her own when Donovan finds her and, like, Scary. He like shot soft shoes up and grabs her by the shoulders as if now's the time for jokes and pranks. Right, right. That's what I was thinking too. I'm like, really? Really? And Donovan's wandering around the mothership, not being recognized. My note well, reads verbatim. You know They're friends. He was friend zoned recently. He's trying to flirt with her back. That's what must be happening at this point. PLD, I want to slap you. <laughs> My note reads, this is a fucking joke. I'm so mad. The visitors are so incompetent. And then it gets worse. Donovan and Julie escape from, uh, temporarily escape from Diana's voice to find Steve Maitland's working on brains, which of course pisses Donovan off somehow. And then Diana shows up. First of all, how did Diana show up there? That's what I would know. Because they were in the hallway. All of a sudden, they just happened to go to the right door. Yeah. Wait, can, oh, wait, I got this. So Diana and James find Donovan and Julie in Maitland's lap. Right. Donovan and Julie are pretending to not be themselves, though. Like, they're seriously playing dumb. Like, I don't have any words. This is, this is like, as Diana said, this is getting tedious. Then wait. They rip their faces off to show their lizard faces. Diana is completely baffled. And I am same. <laughs> Who also baffled M. I... So Diana orders James to find out who ordered to have those faces put on them. I got nothing. <laughs> I hated this so much. And I loved it as a kid because I had I didn't think about logic at all. I was like, oh, it's so cool. But like adult me you know, looks at it and goes, if they can create lizard masks that look as good as the real thing and then human masks to go here's my first step of logic human masks to go over them why wouldn't they just create human masks that look different it save you the steps save yourself the steps they were masks Seriously, seriously, I have so many questions um, I was so mad I well, think stop, I stopped stop. functioning it's a mask over a mask, and oh, it no, looks no. That those are actual good. lizards. No, at one Donovan, point, there's definitely actual fifth column later lizards. on. Later on, no, not even fifth columns, they're guards. And this time, Donovan and Julie put a lizard mask over their face and then put their own face. So that's what I thought on. happened, and then I assumed, no, it can't be that stupid. They must it be. It was that stupid because things. the next episode, the next time we see them after they walk away, Donovan and Julie are back in Malin's office, and Donovan is peeling the lizard face off of himself. Okay, so that is what happened. I was right the first time when I thought the lizard You're, masks were masks. Because so later had a on. mask and a mask. I'm so mad about it. Because later on, they do do that, because later on, they take guards and put another version of Donovan and Julie's face on them, on the real guards. But we'll get, we're going to get there. I was so, I am so, like, angry. <laughs> this, 
Powell. I, I really Man. stopped functioning. I'm like, I just, uh, uh, how, no. Why? No. Somebody this looks is... at us and goes, it's cool. it'd be fun if Donovan and Julie could have lizard masks on. I was right to wear the Scooby-Doo hoodie, is all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. It, it was Old Man Withers the whole time. The whole, this is a very Scooby-Doo episode for all, I, I, okay. Let's get past this, because or else we'll never get past this. Okay is a strong word. <laughs> okay, is not the word I even <laughs> want to use. Uh, May- okay, Maiden comes back in. Maiden's pissed because Donovan and Julie have made a, a, no- a, a noise, and he is all of a sudden upset because he has these viruses he wants to destroy, which, again, I don't know how I'm you would ever get I'm about the viruses. I, so, I really just it didn't follow it at all. They are batches that they grow on their home world, but he as a human is the one that are working with them. That makes no sense. But he's working on a way so he can get in there and destroy them because he should, as a human, should never get the chance to go down there. But that's... All right. Anyway, Donovan and Julie go look for the list again. And then we get to the Lydia and Nigel scene. How about that? Hey, man. He's a willing and happy sacrifice. Ramalan is one of his favorite holidays. It is. He's going to get his name inscribed in the Book of Heroes for all eternity. But he won't be able to read it. Um, again, they do what they can. Nigel and June, uh, Ken and June Chadwick, they don't do a bad here. They don't do awful. They're just not given a lot to work with. And, of course, it's all there so that Julie can sneak up and listen in. As Diana says, Maitland has assured her the viruses are going to be ready by next week or something like that. I'm so confused about what these virus is supposed to do. No clue. They don't like, say anything about it. What is the point it. of the virus? Viruses. Viruses. Multiple viruses. I, I don't know because they don't tell us anything. Like, and there's a MacGuffin. Sometimes it's a MacGuffin. Right, exactly. Throw the goddamn towel. Ah. Um, so Julia goes and ac- uh, accuses uh, Maitland, or costs Maitland, as it were. Um, but then Maitland convinces her that he's, he's on the up and up, and it's all good. Um, and, oh, Julia and Maitland, they start getting close, and they start kissing. No chemistry whatsoever. Please, God, Dr. Maitland is no Mike Donovan. And it well, Maitland's got to be a good actor. He was on like six episodes of Dallas. <laughs> so he was ready for this. Kill you. So he was ready for this episode at this point. Uh, it's so bad. It's so much. Oh, so much. Um, then we get, this is the next sequence with Lydia and Philip in the office. And not the drinking one, but it is still similar. This, but this is where Lydia tells him that Diana has made accusations, and Philip is like, "Well, that can be construed as mutiny." And then that becomes like his hyper focus. Like anytime anyone is talking about anything, he's like, "So about those accusations Diana made? We were talking about paper clips, bro. What are you going on about?" Right, right, exactly. <laughs> Although I will say, perhaps the best line delivery in the episode outside of Oswald was in this scene. As Lydia does show the accusations and say he doesn't care, doesn't care whatever he's worried about her brother more than anything else. But then, even though she says she doesn't care at the end, Philip says something about blah blah blah, and she turns and goes, "Yes, what are you?" Like asking him directly, and Philip just turns and just goes, "Your commanding officer." And it's like such a great, it was a great little mic drop moment. I'm, I know I'm reaching for good things here. I'm reaching for good things here. It's stretch, Fieldy. Is a stretch, but I did like Ashmore's delivery there. Um, Philip, I actually low key, I really like Philip this last run of the episodes. Looking for, looking for you know, jewels in the hiding, I guess. You know, <laughs> he makes me happy, okay? <laughs> Not much, but happy. Um, and I need that happiness because the next thing is perhaps the biggest load of. bullshit. Even beyond the mask to me. Julie, Maitland, and Donovan start talking it out. And somehow they come to the conclusion that the only place, the only place the list can be, the floppiness can be, 
on a mothership that is five miles wide. The only place they haven't looked is Lieutenant James's office. So you've searched every nook and cranny for a floppy disk. So you've also looked at Daya's office, I guess, Lydia's office, I guess, Phil, like, and James's office is the only place left. They've only been up there for like 10, like what, four hours. And they've searched five miles in four hours. I, I, I'm not I, sure what they think a volcano is. <laughs> there is nothing in James's office that looks even remotely like a volcano. Not anything. And that. And then that. Julie is going to seduce. James out of his office. Can I just say, like, as, as viewers, no. <sighs> like, my, I assume they think she, woman, she can do uh, sexy things. Listen, I have been a, a female human being my whole life, and I can tell you right now, not everyone can do alluring uh, thing. Also, I wouldn't try to allure an alien. Also, listen, if he's stupid, Jane Badler, Diana, the sexiest thing in the galaxy, he's not going to take one glance at me. Come on, Mia. Well, everything was wrong with this. I just wrote, this is so awkward for James. Yeah. And, and here's the thing, too. Maybe James likes two different partners. He likes the badass of Jane Badler. He thinks that Julie is more... I don't want to be mean. type. But Julie has no... How shall I put this? Sexuality? He couldn't seduce anybody. There's no... <laughs> There's no sexual vibe coming off of this woman. Right. Like she's she's pretty, but that's not the same as as being sexually alluring. Correct. Jane Correct. Badler is like Diana alluring. could seduce everybody. In okay. fact, as soon as I start watching this show, my panties disappear. But <laughs> Julie, no. <laughs> Simply no. I think that I might have to use that in my description of the video as well. Um <laughs> But even worse, I mean, I'll, I'll put a punctuation mark on this little thing before we move on, because we have to move on, because we'd be, we'd be here all day. Not only does he try to seduce him, she starts taking off her clothes and being seductive, or trying to be seductive, and then says, you should wait outside. Like, the whole thing is, if you're trying to seduce him, you're trying to show him the goods at this point, and you want him to believe that he's got to wait outside so that... There's no clothes in there she can change into if she's trying to what go into a night year. I don't know what the hell lingerie. I don't know what like, she's I'm so glad to do. he got arrested. She deserved it. Right. Diana right there. Although I will say the best part about that sequence is James's uh face when Diana's at the door. And James gives the whole <laughs> face. <laughs> it's only that good because it's the rest Oh, of I interpreted it as he knew the whole time that he oh, was no. going to arrest her. He he was going out the door. He got caught by, like, by Dana. It was more like a, aw, shucks. <laughs> he got his hand caught in the cookie jar, so to speak, um, which describes about the alluring, the amount of alluring that Julie really did, uh, a cookie jar. Um, so then Diana brings Jean, uh, Julie to the volcano, which, of course, Julie figures out what the volcano is because she's the smart one of the group. That's a tragedy. <laughs> of course, also, she does give a little snark with Diana. Which is oh, they're so catty. The bitchy way these women say, darling. I can watch that all day. Oh, yeah. Back and forth, too. Well, darling. Um, and then Donovan's there. Yeah, but first you have to find them, don't you? That's always been the hard part. They're good. They're good that way. They've always been good that way. Now, Donovan and Maitland see James running about. So they figure out they have to work together. And this part is also very awkward. So Donovan Maitland, Donovan tells him that he had to come board clean. No guns, no grenade, no anything. 
But Maitland says they can work on some. He works with some pretty volatile chemicals. They can whip up something. Okay, that's fair. So then Donovan and Maitland are working on this concoction. And Maitland explains to Donovan what he's doing. And it's, <laughs> Donovan's a stupid lot like, oh, so you're just stalling. The exact same thing that Maitland's been saying the entire time. So finally, he, he's listening to her, listening to him. But the worst part about the whole thing to me, Maitland at one point goes, careful, that's tough. And then, like, at the very end of the sequence, Donovan says to Maitland, be careful. And the only reason he's saying that is so that he can come with the following line afterwards of, we are too much alike. Because what the fuck does Donovan, cameraman, news cameraman Mike Donovan, know anything about chemistry? <laughs> to say, be careful to the scientist. <laughs> Where's that towel? Where's that towel? Towel. Throw the towel. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. Throw it in. All right. <laughs> it's, I, I, I like that the dialogue says they're alike because nothing else did. Right. They're not alike at all. They're more of a Mulder Scully situation, but it's fine, I guess. Uh, they just, then, go ahead. I got, um, I don't. I just don't care. No. <laughs> the and then thing we... is, is that I feel like they could have been kind of interesting yeah. if we actually had characters that lasted more than one episode. Bingo. That's when we do our character ranking. It's going to be very difficult because they all, a lot of these are one-off characters. This would have been so much more interesting if it was the curly-haired visitor from like many episodes ago who was pretty Howie. cool. Howie, right? Yes, Howie. Yeah, should have been Howie. Been, should have been Howie. That would have been much better. Recurring characters would have been so much of a better option for them. The only recurring characters we got, I can think of, are uh, Langley, the guy who was there for two episodes, who was the guy who was trying to impregnate Robin again. And Chris technically was a recurring character. Not really a, a real, not really a guest star. He was there for like three episodes or so. That's about it. James. If he's, I'll say James, you know, yeah. If he counts as a recurring character, I guess. But he's almost like a, a regular at this point, or at least a semi-regular at this point. Either way. Um, so the next thing we jump to is the aforementioned scene before. It is the Philip and Lydia rewind. The only thing different is the fact that they're drinking the high C with the, <laughs> with the straws. Where Lydia says it's the same exact thing that she says last time, with the only exception being that she tells Philip about the brainwashed spy that diana has in Thelma. that's the only thing different um okay so donovan and maitland then caused some ruckus in the lab because as maitland says donovan said fired the whole lab and all the guards including james start running there uh including philip and all of a sudden philip we actually get to see philip taking actual action against his fellow visitors he knocks out a guard himself um which was kind of cool. I was kind of cool to see that. He actually stood up at that point. And Donovan, of course, gets dressed in a, in, a, in a visitor garb with a helmet this time. That's at least somewhat smart. At least you can go around with a helmet on, because then you're not as well uh, as well known. Gets into uh, escape, or gets to free Julie from the volcano room by knocking out a few guards who don't listen when he says to get out. And then Julie delivers one of my favorite lines of the episode. Well, it's about time you got here. I, that's what she said. What I heard was, aren't you a little short to be a stormtrooper? <laughs> exactly. The same exact vibe. 100%. It was the exact same thing. Donovan was acting the same way. Like, um, all right. So Donovan are. and Julie meet back up with Maitland and, and Philip. Now, here is the weird part. I don't even understand why they do that. They got so obsessed with the mask idea. Donovan and Julie just randomly grabbed two visitors. Randomly. They're not for the comp. They're not anybody. Take them into the Maitland's lab and put Donovan and Julie masks on like for like a diversion or something. But like, why? Like, what? I, like, I don't even know understand, understand what the logic is. Like, it's going to be a distraction for somebody. Who's and why somebody. are those, those <laughs> visitors? The same height as them. That's a great question. Now, here's my last 
I think my last what the fuck moment, and it's addition to this. So, quote unquote, Donovan and Julie, faux Donovan and Julie, walk out, stumble out of the room, like, oh, 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 where Diana sees them. And Diana and James go, ah, oh, that's far enough. And then the visitors, are they, all of a sudden, they start speaking visitorese. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, for whatever reason, that makes Diana go, what? Huh? The vault. What? Yeah. Okay. What? What is that? Sure. Where does that even come into you play? You know what? It's not that we lost the plot. It's the show didn't have one. Yeah. Uh, they needed something, so they just needed to just go ahead and whatever needed to be said to move from point A to point B, oh, that's what, what they did. God me oh wait we haven't got there yet okay um so donovan oh, no. we didn't get there okay uh we're at the vent right oh yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yes yes they donovan and, and maitland and Julie, they blow up the viruses they go to the vault they blow the viruses and how do they get home or how do they get away they go through oh, goddamn the vents. Fucking vents. <laughs> my note says this is a personal attack on my brain function. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Do this is feel... in the damn giant, still open, unlocked, goddamn vents. There's never a problem with V. Philip ordered the vents unlocked again. Because he knew the resistance needed to come on board. So he ordered the vents unlocked. He knew at some point. Donovan was going to end up in the vents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It's bad. Uh, but I, we did get a good March singerism. He gets to the landing bay. Ed proceeds to slide down the ladder. Why? Because he's Mark fucking singer. Everyone else has a crime now, but he's just going to go whoop, and slide down like a fire pole. Okay, so they get away. Donovan, Maitland, and Julie fly away in the Sky Fighter. And so we jump to the feast of Ramalan with everybody. Eat Nigel? I don't know. That's a great question. I mean, they were definitely going to, they weren't going to eat him alive because Diana had that big, like, I don't even know, very sci fi looking spear kind of thing that he was she was gonna like stab him with what i don't what, what i think is funny is how all the guards or all the people who are dressed as human they don't have their lizard outside most of them are still human there's some lizards they have like permanent marker drawn on them like as part of their as part of their makeup it's like the cheapest makeup like they don't have like real makeup it's just basically someone drawing on them so i want to see simple? one of the lizards in their lizard mask with makeup on Mm, that would have been cool, but definitely not because the makeup is all that's there. They're already in makeup. So we, makeup. I don't think we've ever seen more than three lizards at once. Could be right. They just only had the three masks, right? <laughs> I think there were four in this scene. I do. I do think there was four because there were the two ceremonial people who were a thumbnail. I want to say there was at least two others in the audience. So maybe we had four. All at screen on the same time. I'm looking right now because I know I was watching. It is a panning shot. They are all they do pan without an edit. Okay. So not necessarily all on the same screen. So are we like, thinking yeah. they only had the four masks? Four masks. That's what we'll go with. Because <laughs> usually we only see two together at right. once. Right. But I think we've seen so like the max is four. I don't think we've ever seen more than that. So I really no. feel like they only had the like the was the max amount of masks that they had. I'd have to go back and check the wedding of Charles and Diana. I think that's where we had the most like, visitors on screen at once. So I'd have to go back and check that. But you're probably you might be right. I think it's, I I wouldn't be surprised if you're right. Or the other one I would want to check would be the visitors' choice episode where they're the new visitor processing plant or everyone went to Playa del Mar and they're that place. They had a couple of different visitors in there. That might be as well. But you might be right. So uh, at this. Uh, I almost said dance at this feast. I wrote, <laughs> My holy God and Diana, 
that outfit. It's a red <laughs> dress with this golden headdress situation. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that this show has become, how do we get Jane Badler in a bomb outfit at the end? <laughs> That's pretty much it. Because that, that is the formula of this show. Mm -hmm. She does look very, very alluring in this. I'm not going to lie. Uh, while Lydia is dressed up like a dominatrix, um, that seems to be her MO at this she point. She always looks like she's come off the set of Rent Sonia. That's a great point. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. I, I would be surprised the costume is from Rent Sonia, to be honest with you. Um, so Diana's about to sacrifice Nigel when Philip shows up, and we realize after a conversation, they believe Philip was killed by Donovan. They never I had no idea what's happening. I, why why do they believe that? Like and he just comes up and starts accusing her of mutiny. And I'm like, what? Like, I don't know where it's like, yeah, it's like boom. No one's talking about this. What are you doing? Why would you bring that, it up? I guess he has to do it because that's the only way they can force Diana to change her vote. Because mm -hmm. if, if he considers if she is accusing him, he'll consider it mutiny unless she changes her vote to... Why are you doing this publicly? I don't know. This is dumb. I don't know. Bro, I, I don't know. subtlety. Blackmail. Get like on her cares. level. I don't feel like care. Philip's like, fuck you. I, I am what I am, and you know, I'm going to throw this out there for everybody. You see what happens when you, you accuse me of being for the columnist? You get stopped. I think everyone in that room is confused, and the <laughs> gossip on the mothership is going to be wild for the next few weeks. Were you there? I was there at Ramalan. <laughs> oh, remember last Ramalan? Oh, you weren't there? Let me tell you, lizard. Oh. It was wild. <laughs> uh. Oh, my last, my last officer I worked under, Philip, Diana, <laughs> and Lydia. I'm prepared for anything. Laid into him like no tomorrow. Ah, <laughs> uh, God. So Nigel's safe. Yay. And then we jump to Donovan, Maitland, and Julie making it back. And all of a sudden, Julie about to go off with Maitland and leave the resistance behind. Really? You set up in this episode that Julie wasn't going to go with Maitland because she wanted a career and wanted to do stuff and she had commitments that she wanted to make and not want to be a housewife. Well, we now already know that's not actually what she wanted because she ended up with Denny like a month true, later. True. But we're to believe all of a sudden that she's going to leave the resistance behind to go off and be a love with Maitland at this point. Listen, sometimes you see some shit <laughs> and you're just like, yeah, I'm done. She's and been tired of the resistance for a while. She wants to go be a doctor. No, like this made sense. Honestly, she should have left the show to go be with him. Hey, Grant wants to leave the show. That's different than Julie wanting to leave the resistance. Oh, I think Julie <laughs> wants to leave the show. She, <laughs> she she hasn't been doing anything. I know. She, what was the last thing she did? I don't even remember. We had that one virus episode, and then I think, I think she's in another one. one. No, that was it. That she was oh, that was it. So clearly, she just wants to go be doctor in. Yeah, Let it yeah. go cure the zombie virus <laughs> so that the Red Queen can't say, you're all going to die down there. <laughs> but I love I'm going to that impression eventually. If I can You'll get it. there. You're close. You're getting close. More and more, the more you say it, the closer you need to go getting. higher. A little bit higher. A little bit higher. You're a little, you are a little bit guttural with it at this point. Because she's, she's a kid. You're all going to die down there. Uh, I'll get it. Uh, you'll get there. You'll get there. It might have helped if I had watched this movie in sometime in the past five years. <laughs> Somehow, I think before next episode, you might watch this movie again. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to watch them all. <laughs> How many are there now? There's like seven of them, right? Uh, yeah, I think that's about right. That's about right. Seven of them. Yeah, makes sense. I even wa I mm, I don't even think I saw the last one. To be honest with you, I didn't see the last one. The last one I saw was um, they were on the boat. Retribution. That sounds right. That sounds right. They all kind of flow together, especially their names. They all flow together for me, to be honest with you. I mean, um, Afterlife's the best. Yes, definitely. Just Easily. Just fact. Fact. That's just, just a fact. Just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. So, okay, so Julia wants to leave, but I'm also surprised that Donovan's just going to let her up and leave. I'm like, whatever. Okay. I guess he's friend zoned. He doesn't care anymore. Is that what, what's going on here? I, it, I mean, at this point, 
would you want to be with her? I wouldn't want to be with her. I'm like, no. girl, you left me for your job. But he's like, yeah, after war, come find me. Where? How? <laughs> this is free social media. How do people oh. find people? I don't know. This is I mean, this is a real hot tub time machine situation for me. I just don't understand the time. I yeah, you know, I don't either. And uh, it's fine that we end this episode like that. That's the end of the episode. Um, and Donovan like, was completely. completely fine with her leaving. Like he thought yeah. she was leaving. I was saying, Donovan's like, okay, no problem. I'm like, Donovan's gonna let her go. I know you've been friends, though, dude, but Jesus. Um, I don't know. Is there anything left to talk about this episode? Or are we, are we, are we yeah, this was like just, times? this was just, it wasn't even that it was lazy. It was like, it was actively dumb. Insulting, actively insulting. Yeah. I'm trying to decide whether I actually like this one, which one I, I thought was worse was this one or the War of Illusions one, the computer one. I still don't like the baby lizard episode the most. That's the baby. Leest dragon. That's the one you like the least? Mm -hmm. You know how I feel about those pregnancy episodes. Yeah, you're not a big pregnancy fan. The other pregnancy episode I didn't like either. Yeah, so I got that's true. That's true. I'm consistent. I think I like the War of Losers one least, but this is the most actively insulting one, I think. Yeah, yeah. I can agree right. with that. That's oh, right. the next episode isn't great either. The finale, the, yeah. the series finale, as it were, the return, as it were. Um, I will stand right here now and say I actually had a lot of fun with the finale back in the day. I'm interested to see what this rewatch is going to bring me. Um, there's a lot. I, I know there's a lot wrong with it as well. Um, but it's definitely was more fun than these last couple episodes, I think. I think it was a step back up. That's my own thought on it. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. <laughs> All right, Lego. I'm done. I'm done with the night. How about that? Let's where where, where can the folks find you, Lego? Uh, let's see. You can find me at YouTube at Legoland13 or on Spotify and Apple Podcast. I have a podcasty thing where mostly I talk about 80s horror movies, uh, Nick Cage, all sorts of stuff. Uh, the Unhinged Binge. Hopefully, I'm going to have an episode on um, Night of the Comet before April 8th, where we're having the uh, solar eclipse, which, okay, Night of the Comet, not about a solar eclipse. I should probably do a little shop of horrors, but you know what? I like Night of the Comet more, so that's what I'm doing. It's your Sorry. podcast. You do whatever you want to do. <laughs> I'm actually more, I'm, I'm more excited to hear you talk about Night of the Comet, because I think that's... Night very much it is awesome yes it is a very good movie very fun movie and it's very much your kind of movie so I'm well, i mean obviously i'm a huge muppet fan and we all know and i'm pretty sure the um the henson company did audrey too right yes i'm 95 percent sure on that but yes and i think the the voice of audrey too is from i saw the temptations the four tops that could be that one I don't know as much about, to be honest with you, so I can't definitively say that. What I can definitively say is, did you know they are doing a, not a remake of the musical, but they're actually doing a adaptation of the original source material called Little Shop of Halloween Horrors movie? They're doing a new movie directed by Joe Dante. And oh. With a script from the guy who wrote Gremlins 2 supposedly interesting yes I do feel like there's some connective tissues in a little shop of horrors and a gremlins mm -hmm. you seem like they're they go well together i think joe dante is a phenomenal director for that that's what i said as well when i heard that i was like wow that actually sounds worthwhile of uh, watching i don't know when it's coming out yet i just heard about it recently um yeah i'm excited i'm excited i think that could be a lot a lot of fun I have interest. It is yes. peaked. Indeed. Um, and I watched the burbs to celebrate. Uh, I like mean, there's no bad time to watch the burbs. Absolutely. Yeah. One of my favorite movies. <laughs> Absolutely. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. So. Uh, all right. You can find me at Pawn Square Denuzio on the old Twitter. You can find me all over this channel here. I do uh, review every other week, but I also do two meter for white dudes on a film with PJ. We're going to be back in action finally after a long, little, little bit of a layoff. Um, we're going to come back and do the final 
entries in our Friday the 13th season, which are actually the fan episodes or the fan films uh, by Womp Stomp. We're going to be Never Hike Alone and Never Hike Alone 2. Have, have you seen Final Summer? I think it came out last year. With no. Tom Matthews is in it. Uh, Tom Matthews is in that one as well? Oh, because Tom mm-hmm. Matthews is in these ones as well. So. Oh, no, this is not like a fan movie. It's an actual... Oh, it's an actual... Movie. Okay. However, oh. it's obviously just a fan movie. Gotcha. Gotcha. Like it, it's Fair. just it's just uh they I mean they they talk about Jason constantly they even did the <laughs> really you know that Harry Man from Beanie got paid every time they do that I did hear that that's, that's a great. great that's a great move oh, what a, he's he is set for life but uh yeah life. the movie plays just like a fan movie except hmm. it's not technically Crystal Lake it's no technically fire. a whole different story but um it it it's not a great movie but I would recommend it just because. What? You could totally watch it as a Friday the 13th sequel. What was it called again? Final Summer. Final I summer. think it came out 2022, 2023. Okay. All right. Well, I'll look into it and see. Yeah, for sure. Um, you find me also doing Holy Snokes, Star Wars podcast every Wednesday. We're dealing with the Bad Batch coming close to the Bad Batch finale. We're having excited about that. And Crown Jewels, when I talk about Queen this week, when you listen to this. Uh, I'm not sure. I can't remember when I'm airing it. I'm either on Fat Bottom Girls or Je- no, I'm probably on Jealousy at this point. So, Or maybe even Bicycle Race. I'm somewhere in the jazz album, so we're going through that album bit by bit. Uh, <laughs> if you do like this here, hit that subscribe, hit that like button. If you're hearing this on audio, congratulations. Yay, you made it to the audio feed, which is now open. We are putting everything on the audio feed. Uh, Review has its own audio feed, so that's a very exciting uh-huh. And I gave that one five stars. Yeah, I only gave my own podcast three because I'm honest <laughs> that way. <laughs> wow, I gave you five stars. Huh, I definitely you. gave five stars. I like, I love your work. Um, so yeah, so give us five stars if you can. That'd be great. Um, if if you want to help support even further, do you have a Patreon? patreoncom slash Paul PLD projects. Do some extra content here and there. Um, you just, uh, hang out yesterday, the other day, and uh, it went well. Um, but yeah, I guess, uh, guess that will be it. You can join Austin Goodellis, right? And name some of my top patrons. Austin Cadell, uh, Jeff Alterman, and Brandon Buckingham. I love them most. Uh, you guys keep the lights going, so I really appreciate you. Um, I guess, yeah, that will do it. You'll see you next time here on Review as we tackle the series finale of Televised V from 1985. And uh, we'll have a couple of other extra episodes after that before I dive into the 2009 remake, which... Well, my compatriot has already gotten into it, has tweeted me a few times, oh. yeah, me a few times with that. And she uh. has more makeup brands, and I can't wait to get there. <laughs> I it's just bad. <laughs> we'll find out. We're gonna find out. I I watched the series once when I came out, and that's the only time I've ever watched it. So we'll get there. But until next time, everybody, pray tenama. See you next time.